right. How about now? Better? Whew. <laughs> Hi. I'm not going to look at all of you for a while. Um, I can't even begin to describe to you the intense presence of God that has been oh, present all day long. Um, so much, even while I was just sitting in my living room and typing message on my computer and I was talking to some earlier today. I've never been like on the verge of tears for such an extended period of time before without just completely losing a grip. But um, I posted the following on the Mercy family page just a couple of hours ago. And I said, have you ever woken up with a heightened level of expectancy for the things God has planned for the day? It's the most humbling yet exhilarating feeling. However, it's not actually a feeling at all, but is the Spirit of God alive within you, allowing you a glimpse into what's ahead. He does this partly so you can prepare your heart, so you can pray His will be done, and so you can be alert to His moving on the hearts and lives of those you come in contact with that day. Sometimes this great expectancy wells up instantaneously. Other times you feel it building up over time like the impending eruption of a volcano. Either way it happens, though, you know something big is in the works and is about to be manifested. Somebody's prayers are about to be answered. Someone's needed miracle will transpire. Someone's heart will be softened to the salvation by the drawing of the Spirit, and someone's calling will be made known to them. And yet still others are going to step into new waters and others into new measures of faith and others into deeper levels of surrender. And all of it is so good. Oh, so good. Because we serve a good, good father. And there is that same great level of excitement in me. Whew, and it's been here all day for tonight's service. Because I knew and I already had written that to me, this evening's service will be a time that God will pour his spirit out in increased measure. A time to be spoken to by him. A time to receive from him. And above all else, a time to give him the honor that is due his name. Hallelujah. If you read that post, it said, For those that will be attending, please come with an attitude of great expectancy. <laughs> or at least be open to it rising up within you once you get here. <laughs> so if you hadn't read that, I pray that you're at least open to it. <laughs> and if you don't feel it yet, <laughs> you're gonna. Um, so what he has for, this e for us this evening is something that actually um, he began to speak to me on Sunday morning as he woke me up bright and early in the morning to begin praying for the services that were to be held that day and the people that would be in them. And it was a message of expectancy that he was giving, and we're going to get into more of that in a little bit, but it brings us to the title of the message this evening, which is Heightened Expectancy. And it's my sincere prayer that while this word, his word, and his spirit meets up with your need and with your desires tonight, that you will each step out and sustain a level of heightened expectancy yourselves. Hallelujah. Because it's not just something to grab a hold of and then it to become waning again, right? It's something to grab a hold of and to keep to sustain. God spoke that to me. I had only been at mercy for a couple of weeks. And God says, you tell the people that they don't have to grab a hold of my presence and hold on for dear life because they don't know when they're going to feel it again. And they don't know when I'm going to move again. And they don't know when I'm going to speak again. And they don't know when I'm going to move and do things on their behalf again. He says, you tell them to hold on to me because I am setting the pace right now. And the pace is going to continue. And so they need to get in the same pace and the same heartbeat as what I am in. That their hearts be in rhythm with mine so that they can keep the pace of all the things that I'm going to continue to do in the body. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, our expectancy doesn't only come from that stirring of the Spirit within us, right? 
we're only further moved to be able to have that heightened expectancy because of what we already know, or at least what we are going to begin to learn of him if you don't already know. That God is holy and that he is good and that he is faithful and that he is abounding in mercy and that he is the bestower of provision. And we could go on and on and on. And we could say as the words of the psalmist David in Psalm chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Verse 12, surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as a shield. It's what we already know of him, which allows the stirring of the spirit to bring us into a place of heightened expectancy. Things we already know. Things which Paul wrote of in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. It's what we will come to know if we but ask him, as Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. What did we just sing tonight? I call and you answer and you came to my rescue. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand. And I throw my hands to heaven and I go, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know this. And he says, call to me and I'll answer you. The truths we know of God and the ones that we're going to come to know are what allow us to move in faith when reaching out for a need in our own lives, but also on behalf of someone else and a need that they have in theirs. Because it's not all about just getting our own needs met. I hope we know that. And I hope we can grow and mature past that. That our prayers aren't only on behalf of all the things we need and want in our lives. But when we begin to pray for others and we go, God, I can't help them. And God, I can't deliver them. And God, I can't save them. And God, I can't take the taste of alcohol out of their mouth. And God, I can't make the addiction stop. And God, I can't take away the desire they have to put a needle in their arm. God, I can't do any of that but I look to you because you're the one that can deliver and you're the one that can heal and you're the one that can minister and you're the only one that's mighty enough to save them hallelujah so God woke me up at 5 30 in the morning on Sunday morning I do not normally wake up at 5 30 in the morning I am a night owl (laughs) but I instantly began writing and receiving and he was speaking and I was praying and it's all good right And how many of us were here on Sunday morning? Yeah, okay. If you weren't, that's okay. You're not going to be lost. But one thing that God spoke, which I shared with Pastor Jerry, because he was going to be given the message that morning, and I also shared it with the Mercy Music team on Sunday, was that I had a great knowing that as people were preparing for service, as people were preparing to come to church, that they truly had no idea what all God had in store for them. And that hearts were going to be softened and that walls were going to begin to crumble during worship. And that that was what was going to prepare them to be able to more deeply receive what God had for them that morning. And we saw those exact things taking place one after another as people came up, not just to be prayed for, because it's not about getting prayed for. It's about getting answers to the prayers that we need. And so people didn't just come up to be prayed for. People came up to be healed, and people came up to be delivered, and people came up to be set free, and people came up to have cancer completely removed and eradicated from their body. So they didn't just come up to get prayed for. They came up to get a touch from the only one who could move on their behalf. And there was a great knowing within me that I shared with others that God was preparing them even without them knowing as they were preparing to come into his house. Think of Sunday morning, especially if you have kids. It's a little crazy, okay? You're not always like in this law moment, right? 
No, it's, sometimes it's chaotic, right? Sometimes it's like, come on, we got to go. Where's your shoes? Those don't match. What are you doing? I didn't do your hair yet, oh, right? Is it only my house? No. <laughs> and so God was letting me to know that, you know what? As the people are preparing to come to my house, they don't even know what all I have in store for them. Isaiah 64, 4 tells us, since ancient times, no one has heard and no ear has perceived and no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait on him. And Paul repeats those writings of Isaiah later in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, when he says, As it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Yes, has prepared, that says. What does that mean? It means has prepared for us for in the future and means has already prepared it, as in it's already done. It's already taken care of. It's already been prepared. The provision's already been set out for it. God already has made account for it. You just haven't got to the place in your life yet where you need what it is that he's already prepared for you. We're not in heaven yet, right? But what did Jesus already do? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. We're not there yet. It's not our time yet. But guess what? He already went to prepare that place for us. He says, and the way you know. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And the way to be where I am, you already know. Ha, huh, that's good. So us, we, you and I, right? We cannot even comprehend what God has prepared. We can't even comprehend what he has in store. We can't even comprehend the provision that is already ready for us at the time that we're going to get in our life that we're going to need it. He doesn't have to scramble because all of a sudden we have a need. We don't call out to him for an answer and he goes, oh no, I wasn't ready. He already knew, and he already had it all prepared and ready for us. All that we have already seen, think about it, added to the knowledge of what we cannot even conceive what more there is, should have an excitement stirring within our spirit as we've never had before. Hallelujah. Heightened expectancy. Who? Now, what was that? That God was speaking to me. Just an inkling of what his plans were for Sunday, right? Yeah. And what did that do? That brought me to a place of heightened expectancy as I walked in, right? A heightened expectancy for the day. And that's why I was sharing it with Pastor Jerry. And I was sharing it with Mercy Music because I wanted them to know, hey, God has something big planned, all right? And he's preparing things for people that don't even know what all he has planned for them. And I want you to have that same expectancy in you as what I have because he shared this, right? So that we could all be ready for it when it began. And so even though everything about that day might not have went the way that I thought it should, that didn't matter because I was still able to keep a hold of what it was that he had spoken to me and what his plans were for that day. My expectancy level was heightened, right? And my faith was increased because of that. And so I let go of all the other, and I cast it all aside, and I didn't let it cloud my vision, right? And I was able to move forward in what it was that he had already shown me that he willed for his people, right? And therefore, in our time of prayer at the end of service, because I didn't even know Pastor Jerry was going to call me up and give me the mic and say, hey, Pastor Rose, you need to pray this over these people, and you need to cast Satan back where he came from, and you need to do this and that. And I'm going, okay, wow. Well, God already has things planned for his people that they don't even know about, so let this be one of them. Hallelujah, right? But I was already prepared for what God was wanting me to do because my ears were already in tune to hear what it was that he was speaking. Now, none of that is to go, yay me, look what I was able to do. That's not it. It's about having your heart and your life surrendered to him and in tune with him so that when he's speaking, 
we can actually hear what it is that he's saying. Because can I tell you, God is not a silent God. God is a God who speaks to his people, okay? And if you haven't heard him in a while, maybe it's not that he isn't speaking. Maybe it's that your ear isn't quite tuned to the right pitch of what his voice is. Maybe you've gotten clouded by all the other voices that are speaking. Maybe the chaos inside of your mind is too much that you can't even filter out of all of that to get back to where you used to be when you heard from him. And that doesn't mean that you hang your head in shame. It means that you come to him and you say, God, whatever it is that's clouding my vision, that's stopping up my ears, that's keeping me from being able to hear you, I ask that you rip it all out of me right now because I want nothing more than to be able to have the God of heaven speak to me. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah, double yeah. So not only that, but it's so that we can pass it along to others, right? There were many on Sunday morning that stepped out in faith and came up, not for prayer, they came up to be delivered. They came up to be healed. They came up to speak a word over the ones of us that were up here. We had a brand new visitor on Sunday morning, and she came up to me after service, and she said, I had a word for this church as soon as I walked in the door. She says, but when I met you, I didn't give it to you. She says, because I didn't know if it was going to fit or not. She says, so I I just sat on that word until afterwards and then she gave me what that word was and she had tears in her eyes and she says I can't believe how well it all fit and I'm standing there going glory to God because he already had things planned for us before we were even coming into the building today do you think he can send a sister who already knows him and is already tuned to his voice and send her in with a message for his people yes he can hallelujah That's what having heightened expectancy will do. It will get you excited. (laughs) And it will allow you to be prepared for what God wants to do. And then you'll be able to receive it yourself. And you'll be able to pass it along to others who step out in faith to receive what it is that he wills for them. And that's not just for the pastors, and it's not just for the leadership, and it's not just for the worship team. It's for each and every one of us who are called by his name. Amen? That's good stuff, guys. Yeah. Now, the reason that Lewis prayed for me that I'd be able to talk is because I was up here standing to him and Chris this evening... And I felt like my words weren't going to come out. Like, there is just such an excitement in me today. Like, have you ever been so excited that you just, like, open your mouth and nothing comes out? I'm just like, "Ah." like, yeah, it's that good. And I'm like, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm worshiping tonight, and I'm like, God, like, how... How can I even speak for you? How can I even, like, you're going to have to show up and do this thing because I can't even get my words out. Yeah. So. Oh. And and and. So I wrote this out earlier, as the Holy Spirit was stirring so strongly, and I'm just going to read it to you, not try to preach it to you. So, um, I want you to listen, and I want you to focus, and I want you to know that this is a word from God, and that you can lay hold of this word. All you got to do is step out and believe it. There is a strong and a mighty call being sent out from God to his children tonight, and it's a call to come up higher, to see things from God's perspective, to look with eyes of faith, and to have heightened expectation for what we will see God doing not just in our lives, but the lives of others and in our church and in our community. Some of you have felt what can be described as a shifting that's been taking place. And the shifting that has happened has taken place while in your alone time with God. And it has been in your time of drawing closer from that place of coming closer and closer and closer to him. And so if that's you tonight, if you felt that shifting going on in your spirit, you know, not just a stirring of him, not just an excitement of his, okay? Not just a, ooh, God's getting ready to do something. I can't wait to see what it is, okay? But if you've also felt like a shift 
within you, okay? God is saying, that's me, and you're on the right track, and it's happened because you've drawn in and because you've come in close, and it's not going to happen, amen, on the outside and in the public until it happens first in your close personal relationship with him, right? Yes, amen. So David, what? He didn't kill Goliath as the very first thing that happened, right? His public display of God's power being on him, right? That didn't happen. God or David didn't kill Goliath in public until he had already killed the lion and killed the bear in private when no one was watching. Okay, so it's the things and the battles and the victories that are won. It's the times that we come into with God in our private time with him, okay, that prepare us for the things that he's going to do publicly as an outward display. And the reason that happens that way is so that we can't think it's about us and we can't get big-headed about it all, right, and that we can walk in complete humility because we know where we were before we killed the lion and the bear and we knew what the battle looked like and we knew how we had to draw in close to him and how he had to be able to be with us and give us that strength so then when we kill Goliath right it's not about us and what we did we just hack off his head and we carry it back and we go look what God done yeah because David wasn't mad that the Philistines were speaking against his brothers David was mad that the uncircumcised Philistine was speaking against his God that's why he was angry. You don't speak about it. You can call my brother anything you want to. That's my brother. I call him a lot of stuff myself, right? I don't have a brother. But <laughs> it's not about you speaking to my brother. It's you rose up against my God. And so it wasn't a fight Philistines against Israelites. It was a fight Philistines and their God against Israelites and their God. And David wasn't going to have any part of it. Amen? Amen? That is not in my message. That was all free. Whew. Yeah, free is good. Um, but as we touch tonight on being called to a place or a new level of heightened expectancy, okay, we have to see that the opposite of that, or having limited expectations, right, comes from residing in a place of doubt or an unbelief. Okay, so heightened expectancy sounds really exciting. But some of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we have very limited expectations. And a lot of times that has happened because we have allowed the things of this world or the defeats in our own personal lives get to us, right? And so we then have doubt or unbelief that takes place, and it re we reside in that place. I was talking to Justin before service. I said there's a lot of people that kind of have the motto, if I expect less, I'll be disappointed less. And I can't hold myself up and get all excited about something and just have my feet swept out from under me and be disappointed. I can't handle that disappointment. I don't want that feeling of disappointment. So I'm just going to go through life and not really expect very much because, okay, maybe Maybe there won't be this great glory in moments, but I also won't have to deal with disappointment. And disappointment sucks. And disappointment's hard. And disappointment kind of takes the wind out of your sails and it takes the air out of your lungs. And I've been disappointed so many times in my life before I can't handle that anymore. And so then what do we have? We just lower our expectations. And we see it all in society, right? Have we ever seen a girl or a guy that, that you can tell they've just been hurt one too many times and then they lowered their expectations? right? We don't have to explain that, right? Or what is, it could be in anything. It could be in a career. It could be in anything just out here in our natural world, right? But what happens when it actually happens with God too? God, I had myself so excited about this thing that, that I was really excited for you to do, and, and I just wanted you to be a part of it. And he's like, but you didn't talk to me first, and it wasn't what my plan was for your life, but we don't get that far. And so we just said, I was so excited for this thing to happen, and then it didn't, and now I'm disappointed, and I can't handle that feeling of disappointment anymore, and so I'm just not going to expect very much from you. And he's saying tonight, there is a call going out to my people tonight to have heightened expectation, okay? And so if we have a level of expectation that is very low right now, that can come because we've been disappointed before in life, but it can also come just because of ignorance on our own part, okay? And I don't mean ignorance as in like somebody acting a fool or somebody being uneducated or something like that. I mean ignorance as in not yet learning of or not yet having experienced, right, the great power and the ability and the might of our Creator, 
All right, and so tonight, I want you to know that that all changes, and tonight, expectation is rising up in you, and you could feel it in your spirit, right? You could feel that expectation rising, and tonight, God is sending out this call for you to be brought to levels of heightened expectation, and there's going to be total freedom, and there's going to be restoration that's going to come from that, all right? It's already begun. It already, if you didn't know it before Sunday, and you came up Sunday during the prayer, time, right, which wasn't just to get prayer, but was to receive something from God, all right, at the close of service, then you know that it's already started, and that was your first indicator, but tonight is just going to be more of the same, and the power and the presence of God that is in this place is going to bring it about. It's going to bring it about because it's His will for you to lay hold of it, for your level of expectancy to be heightened in this time, and for your faith to come up higher, and for the plans of God to be able to be fulfilled because his plans can't be fulfilled through our lives if our level of expectation is down here and if our faith hasn't been planted and grown into a a great tree for the birds to nest in and so our faith has to come up higher and so for sickness and for heartache and disease to be eradicated from people's bodies and for deliverance and for healing and for restoration to be made manifest right before our very eyes first of all we need to repent for our unbelief if we've had any unbelief or any doubt within us. What the demands say, God, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, forgive me for any amount of unbelief that I've had residing within me, for any time that you have spoke something to me and I doubted you, for any time that I heard a prophecy and I thought, well, that must be for them, but not for me. No, any time that I've ever doubted you in anything, any amount of unbelief that has ever been exercised or ever been spoken out of my mouth, even in my prayers to you, sometimes you can hear that unbelief come out of my mouth. I repent of that right now. And I say, God, I've I'm sorry for that. I repent of that. I ask you for forgiveness of that, that the great and mighty creator of the universe, that I would have any doubts within me and that I would speak any of that out, that I wouldn't think that you were able to perform whatever it is that I need you to do. Amen? And so that's the first thing that we do is we repent for our unbelief. But then after that, we ask for increased faith. Lord, forgive my unbelief. Forgive my doubt. What did the man say? I believe, but help my unbelief. So we repent for our unbelief, but then we ask God, God, increase my faith. God, let my faith grow within me. Let it rise within me. Let me have heightened expectation and a further level of faith within me that is increased within me. And then after we do that, there's three things, okay? We're asking for forgiveness of unbelief. We're asking for increased faith. And then we're going to seek his gifts and ask for them, okay? We're going to hold tightly to his word that tells us that he wills to lavish his gifts upon his children, right? We just heard that scripture uh, recently. I can't remember who it was that was preaching on it, but they said, what did, what did he say? He says, you men who are evil wish to give good gifts to your children. How much more does your heavenly father want to lavish? I love that word. Want to lavish his gifts upon his children, So if you don't know yet know that you're his child, we need to take care of that first and foremost, right? And we're going to do that right now tonight. But if you already walk in that blessed assurance that Jesus is yours, then you're going to reach out further for all that he wills to give and to gift and to perform for you and through you in your life tonight. Do you feel it stirring in you? Do you feel heightened levels of expectancy rising up in you tonight? This is a night of heightened expectancy and increased capacity, okay? We're going to need both of those for the times that we're coming into. We're going to need heightened expectancy, and we're going to need increased capacity of the Spirit of God working through our lives, right? Amen. Somebody say amen so I can catch my breath. Good. All right. So the Lord is going to supernaturally bring healing, right? Deliverance, restoration. There are three women in our congregation who are battling something right now, all within weeks of each other. And from the very first one to the next two, I have heard the same phrase come out of all three of their mouths. God's got this. The first one finds out something. She goes, God's got this. Second one finds out something. First thing I hear from her in the hospital room, God's got this. Third one calls me on the phone, tells me news, says, 
God's got this. I said, you're just going to be like the God's got this sisters, and we're all going to make t-shirts that say God's got this. It's okay. God's got this, right? And it's just going to be like the mercy motto for a while. Yeah. And why is that? Because the Lord is going to do supernaturally, bring forth healing and bring forth deliverance and bring forth restoration. And it's not just going to be for these three women who have been examples of faith to us, okay? But it's going to be in all the places and in all the lives that we have seen the enemy running amok. Has anybody seen the enemy running amok lately? Yes. Amen. And I'm getting kind of sick and tired of it, I have to tell you. Okay? And so there will be alignment with his will. There's going to be alignment with his word. There's going to be alignment in your spirit as you felt that shift happening. Okay? That's to bring things into alignment. A shift has to happen. What happens when you put braces on teeth that are crooked? They have to come into alignment. So what do they have to do? They all have to be shifted so that they're all in alignment, right? That's what's happening right now. So that shift you've been feeling, it's things coming into alignment. So there's going to be alignment in his will, alignment with his word, alignment in your spirit. There's going to be a Alignment in your homes where you've never seen alignment before. Alignment like you've never seen. Alignment between husbands and wives. Alignment between parents and children. Alignment between children and parents. Alignment between siblings where you're going to be going, what? I have never seen this before. I've been, I have like, I'm not even this old, and I have like 55 combined years of parenting experience if you add up the ages of all my children, right? No, and I've never seen alignment like what we're going to see, amen? Alignment of his will, of his word, of your life, of your home, of your family, and alignment in your bodies. How many people need alignment in your body in some way and in some shape or form tonight, amen? All right. Whew. Yeah. Amen. So I have one more thing I'm going to tell you, and the mercy music is going to come to the front, and then you're not going to come up for prayer. You're going to come up to receive from God what he has for you tonight. Yeah. So I want to let you know, don't worry if those that are around you, either in this place or in your personal life, do not seem as stirred as what you are. Okay? If they don't seem as fervent, if they don't seem as ferocious against the enemy, if they don't seem as faith-filled, or if they don't seem as expectant. Because God is not going to make you wait until they all come alive before he moves in your, on your behalf. He meets each of us right where we are. So he's going to meet them where they are, and he's going to urge them, and he's going to draw them to come up higher. But simultaneously, he's always going to meet you in the place of heightened expectancy that you are now residing in. Hallelujah. Yes, I can, because I have it wrote down. Don't worry if those around you, either in this place or in your personal life, 